quite. You know, I've seen some pretty ladies, but I want to tell you, this Miss Kelly, what an incredible woman. We've been through this. Would you go through it one more time? <laughs> Come on, please. You're telling me that Miss Kelly's out there. Boy, you can't miss a thing. Come here, come here, come here. Out there. She's Wait not out there. Now, listen, maybe we could draw her in somewhere or another. You see her? Holy moly. Is that a bodysuit she's wearing, or is that just her body? <laughs> if we had some crackers, maybe some yeah. sweets, candy. <laughs> here, put these on the window. <laughs> you never know. Wave to her, wave to her. Say Miss cracker. Kelly. Say cracker. Don't say Polly. <laughs> say Miss Kelly. I don't think that's her first name. Miss Kelly! Let her alone. She, she thinks you're some kind of a sex maniac. <laughs> Let me show you something. So mad yeah. about. Come on over. <laughs> Just a silly 65 year old man and his boy. <laughs> Dad, what do you say we uh, get up to the lake around 7, huh? Well, I tell you, by 7, those fish are going to be full of bugs. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah? Well, uh, why don't we leave here around 6? Well, 6 are starting to feed on those gnats. Mm. Well, what time are the fish just up having their coffee? <laughs> <clears throat> How's it going, Rob? How's what going? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry I asked. Say, we're going to uh, get up to the lake around 5. I'm not going. Oh, Rob, you gotta go. You're, you're so much fun to be around, so pleasant lately. I have a life. Actually, I don't, but I'd like to have one, and it's not gonna happen sitting around a lake with you and Grandpa. Well, well you can bring Alice Hansen. Why would I want to bring Alice Hansen? Because you're in love, Rob. <laughs> you're in love, we all know. Get over yourselves. <laughs> Are you going to let him get away with that? Get away with what? Being 13? Order him to go fishing tomorrow. Oh, I'm not going to order him to do anything. Man, I'm telling you, this clown needs discipline. You understand? I spent 30 years in the Corps. It's full of discipline, still full of discipline. But these guys are going crazy, putting their feet up on the table. One guy's doing this here. Then the other guy's got his hands in the lettuce, playing with that, throwing milk to the kitty. I don't like it, you understand? And you got to take over. You're six feet five or six. What are these for? Those are for fish. Unless, of course, you get real hungry, as we did that night. We were deep in the swamp. You know, Dad, I've been thinking, um, you know, what if we invite Cosmo to go fishing with us, huh? Well, I think three's a crowd. I think, very honestly, Cosmo and I'll go, and you can stay here and watch the house. Okay. Hmm. Oh, that smells really great there, Charlie. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Don't touch it. What? Oh. It has to simmer. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> what is it? I sauteed chicken breasts in white wine with julienne vegetables. Oh, sounds divine, Charles. Simply divine. I hope so. <laughs> well, Charlie, I think you've really knocked yourself out on this meal. I think this could be your best culinary effort to date. Thanks. <laughs> oh, listen, Dad. You don't have to worry about inviting Cosmo to go fishing. Oh, yeah? You think it's a bad idea? Uh, no, I think it's a great idea. That's why I already invited her. You invited her? What, is somebody expecting company? It's probably Cosmo. Cosmo? I told her to be here at 6.30. Be here for, for what? 
dinner. Charlie, what, what's going on here? I mean, you invite Cosmo over for dinner, you don't even tell me? Why not? I cooked it. I don't care who cooked it. I mean, you, you, you gotta tell me these things. And, and where do you get off inviting Cosmo to go fishing with us? Okay, but could you yell at me later? Cosmo's waiting and I haven't even started the soup. <laughs> Is there anything else I should know about? Huh? We're low on olive oil. <laughs> Charlie, come on, what's going on here? Uh, what are you doing? The chicken was dry. <laughs> it wasn't dry. Everybody thought it was delicious. They said it was, that it was very tasty. Tasty is what you say to be polite. It's like an ugly girl having a great personality. Charlie? Charlie, that was a wonderful dinner. The chicken was dry. No, it was very tasty. No, it, it wasn't tasty. It was it was bigger than tasty. It was it was wider than tasty. You know, Charlie, it was very sweet of you to invite me. It it makes me feel really good that you thought of me. Well, I like when you come over. Well, I like coming over, but I can't talk to you unless you come out because I don't think there's room for me under this table. Now, come on, Charlie, come on out of there. Come on. Hey, hey, what kind of game is this? What's going on here? Under the table, huh? That's that game you got for Christmas. I'm going up and get the instructions. They're in my room. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Oh, that's great, Jamie. Uh, what was the point? Dizziness. Oh. All right, come on, everybody, take your seats. There you go. Come on. All right, let's get this on. Uh, Belinda, you, you can't sit here, honey. You gotta go find your chair. I want to sit on you. No, no, no. You can't sit on me because then you're just gonna want to stick gum under my chin. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you don't. Know. You got nice looking tonsils, though. <laughs> Go in there to your chair. Where's Mrs. Hunter? Uh, Mrs. Hunter, she's out sick today. Yeah! Come on now, we don't want anybody to be sick, do we? My grandma had her gallbladder out. Oh, yeah? Is she better? Yeah. My daddy had to have his ears drained. Mm. Too bad this isn't show and tell. <laughs> Come in. Ah, Rico. Boys and girls, we have a special teacher's aide with us today. All the way from seventh grade, Rigoberto. Yay! Rigo, I thought we'd try doing something a little bit different today. No problem, Mr. D. I can handle anything. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. People, let's settle down now. Well, what I thought we'd try to do is um, divide up into two teams. Lucy, you take that team. Belinda over there, and uh, David, you be captain of this team over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say a word, and then I'm gonna give you five seconds to come up with a word that describes the word that I give to you. And this is gonna help us describe things, and this will help us to write better. And when we can write, we can become the principal, huh? which we all know is the greatest honor in the whole world, right? <laughs> okay, Rigo, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, boat. Capsize. Oh, no, that's not very descriptive. It is if you're on the boat. <laughs> let's see, okay, let's start with Lucy's team here then. Um, romance. Belinda? Alimony. No. I thought you were substituting for Mrs. Hunter. Yeah, yeah, it was recess and Rigo's covering for me and. Well, I had a little principaling to take care of, and, well, you know how principaling can interfere with teaching. <laughs> yes, principaling can interfere with a lot of things. Gee, how cryptic. What could she be talking about? Mary. <laughs> Sorry. Listen, Charlie's been calling me a lot lately. I, I wasn't worried when he invited me for dinner, but it's gone beyond that. Oh, Charlie could do dinner. He's very good cook. 
I had his beef tips and capers. You know, Elaine, in America, when two people are trying to have a conversation, the other people give them their space. You know, in Japan, there's no such thing as a space. <laughs> I'm, I'm only telling you because I didn't want to keep it from you because, according to Charlie, you don't like surprises, but he's called me every night. No. What does he say? Nothing, really. We talk, and he tells me stuff about you, and I listen and laugh a, a lot. There's a <laughs> lot of laughing. Well, what does he say that's so funny? Well, I know you broke your nose when you were 14 playing football. 15. I know in high school you drove a red Corvette. Mm. Corvair. Mm. <laughs> and I know that you wear over-the-calf tube socks. You, you mean it's true? <clears throat> well, they're very soothing when you have to stand on your feet all day, all right? I mean, this is getting very personal. Come on. That's what I mean. Mr. D, you've got to help me. They're back from recess and they're after me. Rita! 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 He's in here. <laughs> the score is 92. Oh, you're a god, Isaiah. Good move. <laughs> Tell me something else about Mom. Charlie, you got mom on the brain lately. No, I don't. I'm just curious. Well, you know mom likes to cook. Really? Yeah. Why do you think dad's so useless in the kitchen? <laughs> do you think dad misses her? <sighs> Definitely. Can we change the subject, Charlie? It's kind of making me sad. You want something to eat? Yeah. BLT with a couple of pieces of turkey. You want mayo? Yeah. Oh, shoot it! Shoot it! Yes! <laughs> Bill I knew it was too good to be true. Who is it? It's me, Robbie. Alice. Hi, Alice. What's going on? Nothing. I just wanted to see you, and I'm not very good on the telephone. Were you in the middle of a game? Nah, it was pretty much over. We beat the Knicks again. All right. Oh, how come you're not all sweaty? Oh, I wasn't playing. I was just watching it on television. Oh, well, how come you're in uniform? We were in New York. <laughs> Oh, he plays for the Pistons. That's who I'd want to be. Bill Lambeer. Most guys want to be like Magic or Jordan. I like to be realistic. <laughs> so what's going on? Well, I don't know. Can I sit down? Sure. Maybe we could go steady. Go steady? Yeah. I think we'd be a great couple. And so do all my friends. Even my mom likes you, and she despises everyone I know. Your mom likes me? She loves you. She said you were virile. <laughs> so, what do you think? Want to go steady with me? OK. So what else is going on? <laughs> so I guess we're going steady. Except for this one technicality. Technicality? Yeah, Alice wants me to get my ear pierced. What kind of a woman wants to have a guy get his ear pierced? <laughs> Robbie likes her. If he wants to get his ear pierced, that's, that's up to him. Well, thanks, Dad. Yeah. I mean, Robbie is responsible for his own actions. Well, he knows that. He knows that it's gonna hurt like hell, sticking that big metal spike through his ear. <laughs> well, you know, we got a big metallic bucket out there in the garage. Catch all that blood that comes out of your head. Be a lot of blood. Mm-hmm. I got a sponge out there, too. Just... <clears throat> <clears throat> all right, boys, I hope you've had your fun. 
Dwight, you have the weirdest kids. I mean, strange. Mm. Or sure you're strange. I'm strange. Yeah. I'll tell you something about being strange. Every great man, I could name a lot of them. I just don't have it right on my fingertips right now, but there are a lot of great men who are strange, and they've benefited by being strange. I'll tell you something, how strange I am. That just dawned upon me that is not a bottle of fine wine. Can you pour me some more wine? Boy, yours has turned white. <laughs> I guess you had a white wine. <laughs> so in answer to your question, Belinda, uh, all of these things combine to make this tornado, see, that make it possible that Dorothy's house could get sucked up to Oz. <laughs> okay, now I want you to do 20 minutes of reading tonight, okay? 20 minutes, don't forget. Bye, honey. <laughs> You're gonna miss your bus, Jamie. My mom's picking me up. I have a trumpet lesson. Oh, you play the trumpet? Yep. Yeah, that's a great instrument. I used to play the drums, but that's pretty terrible. Is that what's bothering you? No, no, I, I kind of worked through that. <laughs> Something must be bothering you, Mr. Davis, because you've been looking real serious. Yeah? Well, I've got a few things on my mind. I've got a couple minutes. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, you know, kind of family stuff. My son, he's been calling my girlfriend. Well, I don't know how serious it is, you know. I don't even know if she's really my girlfriend. I mean, we've gone out a couple of times, but... Well, my son, I, I don't know, he just, he just calling her. That's just, it's just family stuff, that's all. So. You should talk to my mom. She knows everything. Yeah. yeah. Moms are great, aren't they? Great to have around, huh? Yeah. Except when they make you take trumpet lessons. <laughs> you gonna be here Monday? Yeah. We still having that test? Mm-hmm. Wanna tell me what's on it? <laughs> Bye, Jamie. Bye, Mr. Davis. Cosmo, uh, I hope this won't be an imposition, but I have a mermaid costume in the car. <laughs> and I thought maybe if you'd like to sit on that rock down there and kind of go, boy, what a day. <laughs> You know, maybe say it a little longer than that so that I can get my camera. <laughs> you know, Charlie, I'm really glad that uh, you could come fishing with us today. Yeah. Glad Cosmo came. I like her. Yeah? Yeah, I know. And I wanted to talk to you about that, Charlie, because, uh, you know, I I'm glad that you, you like Cosmo. I'm glad you like Cosmo. You're in love. <laughs> you think we're in love? I know you're in love. You're gonna marry her. Well, I don't know. She she might not want to marry me, see. Want me to ask her? No, no, no. <laughs> I'll ask her myself, okay? And I'd also like to be the one to tell her what kind of socks I wear. You know, because that's part of the fun of falling in love with somebody is, is discovering stuff about each other. So don't spoil it for me, okay? Okay. All right. But I think she'd make a good mom. Yeah. You miss your mom, don't you? Yeah, I miss her, too. But whether Cosmo becomes your new mom or not, I mean, she's always going to be your friend. She's, she's just that kind of person. You're going to dump her, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm not going to dump her. I'm, I'm not going to... Nobody's going to dump anybody. But... I know it's tough with just me. You know, but it may be just me for a while. Why? Because I have five other people to think about. That's why. Well, I like her. Ben likes her. Robbie likes her. And Grandpa really likes her. <laughs> and she likes you. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like fishing. You know, timing is everything, see? 
And it all depends on where you put your hook and when you put your hook in the water. And... Dad, we've already got her hooked. I'm just saying, reel her in. <laughs> well, at this point, Cosmo and I, we're not even thinking about getting married. I mean, I, I haven't even met her mother. You know? I don't even know her middle name. But she knows an awful lot about me, thanks to someone we both know. Louisa. Louisa's her middle name. <laughs> Louisa. Uh, that's that's kind of nice. Charlie, you didn't tell her my... Ulysses? <laughs> yep. I owe you one. <laughs> well, you guys really take your fishing seriously. Yeah. Let me ask you. It's my turn to talk to you. <laughs> Did you ever hear of the Loch Ness Monster? They've seen him maybe a couple of dozen times. People from all over the world. Here, in Bees Lake, it's the Bees Lake monster. Maybe today we'll get lucky since we didn't catch any fish and see the monster, huh? What'd you say to Charlie? Oh, just, just guy stuff, you know. You're lying to me, Ulysses. <laughs> Stop grilling me, Louisa. Charlie's got a big mouth. That was a secret. Yeah? Well, my lips are sealed. See? Oh, hey. Looks like your dad's got a bite. <laughs>